Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chitons. A little bit of everything. Hello. Hola. Today we're going to be talking about our songs from shoulder to shoulder again. So um, before we get into that, if you would like to pre-save, pre-add, pre-order our new album, you can find the link in the description. And uh, yeah, we hope you enjoy this video and let's get right into it. <laughs> seen us uh, doing some in-person performances you would have um, heard this song um, when we were actually listening to the song I will not lie I heard the song and I'm just like I don't know about this one and I'm just like because I heard because we got this we got a couple songs from this writer Are, Are we allowed to say about the writer? yeah we can yeah so we got these songs from mr. Rodney Griffin and I uh, was listening to the songs I liked some of the songs and I preferred one of the other songs over this one. And Keith is like, that's a really good song. I'm like, yeah, but I like the other one. And then after a while, I'm just like, wait, this, this, this is a really, really good song. And then to be chosen to do the solo, I'm just like, from not liking the song to doing the solo, that's kind of it's kind of funny. Yeah. But it's a good song. It is honestly a really, really good song. Yeah, I don't think I liked it until we got into studio itself, like after we heard the tracks a little bit. I think that's probably when I started liking it. But before that, I, w I wasn't on the boat for this song at all. <laughs> I actually didn't even know the song. <laughs> <laughs> like, most of the songs that we did, we sung it. Like, the songs that pitched to us, we used to sing them all the time because we just like, loved all the songs. But this one, like, I don't know this one. So, like, when they did it in the studio and I was going to do some of the song, I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I don't know this song. <laughs> but... I got through it, and I actually like the song. The so band, sorry, the band who, who play, who um, what was it like? Yeah, made this song, play, track this song. Yeah. It was amazing. They did good as well. So if you hear any mistakes, it's Carlena. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Carlena. I will tell you the truth. We've sung this about two or three times, and um, <laughs> I forgot the words the first time, and I'm just like. <laughs> I don't know the words of this, so if anything goes wrong, it was my fault, and so said, so done. I'm there, uh, we're singing the second verse now, and I'm just like, I don't know the words, and I'm looking at them, and after, because I started it, but I started with the wrong words, so now I threw them off, so they can't help me, and I'm just like, repeating the same line over and over I'll again. I was just pitching whatever words I could remember. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I just wrote the second verse of this song, but, um, when I first heard this song, it brought me back to a time when I, like, I don't remember if it was before I was baptized or after I was baptized. But um, I remember uh, I had just gotten into computers, and I just discovered um, Microsoft Publisher. And so I was just messing around with it, doing different things here and there and having fun. And then I was like, ooh, it would be really nice if I could make something that I could give to people about Jesus. Um, because I absolutely loved Jesus, still do, but um, it was like, you know, my mindset was a little bit different back then. So I was um, writing all these different things. And basically, I wrote out this kind of scenario. I was like, what if there was this person who um, came and told you, okay, listen, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be some bad things that are going to happen. I have a place that I'm preparing for you. And, you know, I'm going to save you. So if you would like to come with me, it's totally up to you. The choice is yours. But, you know, this is my invitation 
Uh, you can live forever in happiness. You won't have to worry about anything else. There will be no more sickness, nothing like that. And, you know, I love you this much, and nobody's, nobody else's love can ever compare to that. And when I heard this song, that's what it brought me back to. Like, what if there was a God who could do anything and who could love you and who really saw the best for you and would do the best for you? Like, what if there was a God who loved you unconditionally or who would give his life for you? That is what this song really brought back to me. And the beautiful thing is that we answer this question in this song. You know, this song, the, the question is answered that I know a God like that. There's a God who looks past our shortcomings and still loves us in spite of all the things that we do. And, uh, yeah, that's what this song, like, this one, when I first heard this song, I was just like, we have to do this song because we have a lot of albums um, that we've given away. Sorry <laughs> for those who shouldn't have known that. But um, we give away a lot of albums. We end up singing in a lot of different places, like when we go out with our adopted grandparents or even when we go out with just our family, like somebody gets to talking to somebody and then we ended up singing for people. And most, uh, most of the times that person ends up getting one of our albums. And I just thought we need to sing this song because you never know this might be the song that somebody needs to hear to know that, you know, this world can be such a cool place. And it may seem like we're alone or that nobody cares or that, you know, we're not important. But there is a God that loves each and every one of us and is looking for, you know, the best in our lives. All we have to do is just accept an invitation. So, like, when I heard this song, I was like, we have to, have to, have to do this song because the message in this song is just too good to be passed upon. Sorry, I'm sitting here. I'm smiling. I'm just like, you better preach. <laughs> Let's hear from the writers of I Know a God Like That to hear about their perspective on writing these songs. Hello everyone, uh, Casey here. Just uh, need to make one note um, before we move forward. So today we should be featuring three songwriters. It should be Rodney Griffin, Rachel McCutcheon, and Susie Smith. But today we will just be featuring uh, Rodney Griffin and Rachel McCutcheon. Miss Susie Smith, her mom passed away and I'm going to be respectful and understanding uh, to our situation. So what we have agreed to do is we'll do an interview at a later time um, concerning her part in writing I Know God Like That. But um, for today, it'll just be Ronnie Griffin talking about I Know God Like That and then Ronnie Griffin and Rachel McCutcheon talking about why I love the God I serve. Um, but just a little bit on Mr. Ronnie Griffin. Um, he is a wonderful songwriter and a member of the uh, singing group Greater Vision. Uh, he's written many um, beautiful songs, um, songs you may have heard um, uh, in Southern Gospel circles or even in um, other churches around the world. Also with us today we have Miss Rachel McCutcheon. Um, you may have heard some songs by her before. Uh, we actually sing a couple of her songs as well. That day is coming. She co-wrote with Karen Gillespie, which you will be hearing from in the future. But um, yeah, Miss Rachel McCutcheon is a wonderful, wonderful songwriter, and Kendra and I have had the opportunity to write with her and a gentleman by the name of Dale Spencer. But yeah, uh, she's a wonderful songwriter. I'm really excited to be able to introduce you to her. As mentioned before, Susie Smith will not be um, featured in this episode today just because her mom has passed away and we encourage you to keep her in your prayers but um, you may have heard um, some of her songs before uh, songs that we have sung by her are home last but not least I know God like that has been released as a single and is now on the radio so you can listen to it um, either on streaming platforms or look out for it on uh, the radio stations near you or maybe on even um, see your sex sense enlighten but I know God like that has now been released as a single so if you'd like to listen to it you can check out the link in the description or you can find it on streaming platforms now back to your scheduled programming I had a uh writing session scheduled with Sue Smith. Mm -hmm. She is a tremendous writer who's written in choir books, uh, all kinds of songs in our genre, such a precious, precious lady. And uh, this happened during COVID or right after COVID. And we just kind of planned this, this day to write uh, through FaceTime or Zoom. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of become since COVID, a way that 
co-writers get together (laughs) and it makes it a convenient way to share thoughts and sometimes you have some glitches and all but uh, it's just a nice way to communicate with each other. So she said she had heard in a sermon uh, this this idea that uh, if you're searching for a loving, caring, uh, wonderful, forgiving God, mm. well, I know a God like that. Mm. And I said, well, that sounds like that would be a fun song to write, Sue. Mm-hmm. So we uh, started communicating mm-hmm. there, and I think it took probably three hours to finish. Mm-hmm. And uh, we wow. just sat there till we had it done there on Zoom. And uh, she, she's a wonderful lyricist. Uh, she doesn't write music. So I wrote the music. She said, okay, the idea is I know a God like that. Mm-hmm. And when I say those words, I know a God like that, mm-hmm. those words in a row seem to have a rhythm. And, and that's how a lot of songs take on a melody. Mm-hmm. So I just said, okay, how about this? I know a God like that. And that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's start there. How's that? She said, okay, I love that. Well, Uh that puts us in a a kind of a Brooklyn Tabernacle ballpark. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of, you got your rhythm. I know a God like that. And then you start building forwards and backwards. And uh, that's how we did it. And it all started when she quoted that phrase. And then the music kind of took on its own itself. And then we worked together on the lyrics after she so wonderfully uh, creates a path for us. And uh, she is so awesome. Uh, Sue Smith is a great, wonderful writer, one of my very favorites to write with. And uh, that's how it happened. Let me tell you, he's faithful. That line, it's kind of personal, and, uh, you know, my dad's a pastor, Mm -hmm. and uh, people who have counseled people Mm -hmm. in the Christian world will tell you that the number one need a human being has is the need to be loved. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be loved and feel like you have purpose, well, I know a God like that. And uh, that this, this song has a message that I think will really inspire and encourage a lot of people. The hope of heaven is enough. The thought alone still lifts me up. But I'm so blessed he offers even more. He's the promise making, promise keeping, sinner saving, savior reaching. That is why I love the God. Sweet deliverer, burden bearer, intercessor, ever faithful one who keeps his word. All right, our next song is Why I Love the God I Serve. Yes. Now, this song. I it's feel fun. <laughs> it is fun. For a time, I think this was our favorite track because oh, we yeah. did our tracks like in two parts, so we had like six one day or was it six yeah i think it was seven the first day and then six the next day oh well, right because yeah. we had the additional right yeah so um this was like our favorite track like we would go listen to all the tracks and then go back to this one again but um uh i think this song and uh i know god like that are very similar in the messages but one is emphasizing you know the facts and then one is emphasizing the love for God and I think that's very important that we have that opportunity to like express you know the great things about God that we love that we appreciate you know that um you know make mean something very special to us and I think this song communicates that in a very very good way Uh, of course it's not like everybody's reasons you know like of course each of us is gonna have one or two things additionally that we love I would think, yeah. But the chorus of the song is very true. I'm trying, I'd like, I want to kind of quote it, but then I don't want to kind of... Don't give it away. <laughs> I'm telling you, though, when we do sing this in, in public, forgive us if we look winded because that it's just a lot of words. So we'll be talking really fast. I hope y'all can catch it. But it is a lot of fun just 
Yeah, if you're singing along, take a deep breath and then go. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but um, this, uh, we also have a t-shirt, uh, which you guys will see soon. We have a t-shirt for this um, song, but it includes uh, some of the, the lyrics uh, on the, um, on, uh, from the chorus. So, uh, uh, Don't well, say nothing to her. Don't give any away. Well, honestly, I Don't think they might just away. hear it because the clip I might just put in this song. That's okay. true. So he is a promise-making, promise-keeping, sinner-saving, savior-reaching. That is why I love the God I serve. He is a mercy-giver, sweet deliverer, <laughs> burden-bearer, intercessor. Well, we never say intercessor. It's intercessor. <laughs> Ever faithful one who keeps his word. Amen. I lost track. <laughs> yeah, but the T-shirt has all these of fingers. all these different things on it. It's absolutely um, beautiful. And shout out to Yolanda who made these. Mm -hmm. And a good one thing I love about it is that when we were designing it, we made sure we found the Bible verse references for every single attribute. So on the back, you'll see the name and then the Bible reference. So if you ever need encouragement, it's always on the back of the T-shirt. You just yep. have to look up the the verse for encouragement. Yeah, and I think that's also a great witnessing tool that, you know, if anybody's ever wondering, like, what are they talking about? You can go and you can read the back. And if they're curious, they might just take a picture and go look it up for themselves. But, yeah. Yeah, but um, when we were doing this song in studio, the tracking, that is, I remember taking a little video of just this one song and posting a little sneak peek of it on. on you did? I Maybe I did. <laughs> 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 people uh people want to hear more but i couldn't you know give more but that's what i was saying if you guys oh. want a sneak peek just let me know i can someone so sleeping so in the dark makes a lot of sense why somebody is very very uh, anxiously uh, waiting yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yes. i told y'all if you want a sneak peek let me know but um i i told them like this is like probably my favorite track on the on the cd um and i was telling them you know this this might be a new intro for something, just to track itself, because it sounds like um, a uh, the intro sounds like an intro to like a, a TV show, like one of them yes. old them old TV shows. So I was like, you know, this could be a good intro to one of our stuff. So I was like, yeah. So let us know what you guys think, and yeah. Well, when the song comes out, then you'll hear it. Yeah, but your phone is on house arrest, buddy. It just might. It is but on but house but arrest, but, but it's always in the house anyway, so it's all good. I'll just stay home. <laughs> Let's hear from the writers of Why I Love the God I Serve to hear about their perspective on writing this song. Well, uh, this one came from a, another Zoom or FaceTime co-write, mm -hmm. this time with Rachel McCutcheon. Okay. She's a wonderful writer who's written so many wonderful songs for the Collingsworth family. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's always a pleasure to write with. She's so brilliant with her lyrics. She's so brilliant with her music. I always enjoy writing with Rodney because he has such a heart for the Lord. And um, he loves to just expound on him. We could never um, get him described big enough. But um, Rodney loves to try to do that. And I do as well. <laughs> you can tell he just loves God. He's very sincere, very um, uh, real is yeah. the word, I think, that very authentic. And, um, and I just enjoy, I enjoy the time writing there. Rodney and I both love trying to describe the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's impossible to describe him as big and as mighty and wonderful as and as loving as he is. But we enjoy trying. So we've written a few <laughs> songs and um, we've actually discussed that. But that's something that we were trying to do in this song was tell people mm -hmm. why we love the God that we serve mm -hmm. so much. And if I remember, she had this idea of why I love the God I serve. Um, and we decided we'd just list his qualities, list, uh, list what makes us love this God that we serve. All the things that he does for us, that he has done, starting with salvation and um, just being the wonderful, awesome God that he is. So sad to think about uh, those who would worship Buddha or Muhammad or so many of these other uh, dead gods. Uh, they can't list these wonderful attributes that we can about mm -hmm. the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we tried to list some reasons in that little fun, catchy, inter-rhyming way. Uh, you know, promise keeper, uh, burden bearer, intercessor. Part of what I love is the opening, the opening line. 
promise making, promise keeping. Mm. Because in the world that we live in, there are so many who they make promises um, and they fall short. You know, we can do that even as human beings, just being human. Um, but to know that God is true and truth and never changes um, what he says he will do. Mm-hmm. And he is who he says he is. And that is one of the main reasons that I love him. Well, a line that ties into that is mm-hmm. next to the last line, the ever faithful one who keeps his word. I would say that's one of my <laughs> I favorites. Felt like, <laughs> I felt like that, that is one of the main themes that we were trying to drive home there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love that he is a burden bearer. Yes. An intercessor. Mm-hmm. That he carries our burdens with us. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and he intercedes for us. Yeah. So that's just it's very, very special. He does what no one else can do in the capacity that he can. So Absolutely. he's just, he's my king. He's my master. He's my savior. Yeah. Uh, the list goes on and on. So we decided to kind of make it a tongue twister. Yeah. I always love it when you can say something that you want to say, mm-hmm. but you can say it in a fun way. Which <laughs> made it fun to listen to you guys. And you... <laughs> Even our Canadian friends, the Chitons, just just nailed this tongue twister. I can understand every word, and it wasn't even a challenge for you, sounded like. So we were so thrilled. Uh, I was so thrilled to get to hear the initial uh, mix. Your producer sent it to me, Roger Talley, of this, this mix of Why I Love the God I Serve. You did a fantastic job on it. Not to mention that we're just at the beginning of this. Now, when your CD comes out, when people start listening, now you're talking about uh, hundreds, thousands of people being encouraged. Every one of these songs came from a line and a sermon that was preached. So that pastor, uh, perhaps he heard it from somewhere else. Perhaps he read it in a book. And then that line was passed on to the congregation and whoever the songwriter was heard that line and thought, wow, I believe this thought can be expounded on and be the subject of a song. So that's really empowering of the gospel to know that one single line is a total, is, a, is heavy enough to, to wear the bait, to bear the weight of an entire song. Yeah. And uh, then uh, the songwriters experience musically, those who have influenced us, they are inputting here too so just think of all the people the lord uses just to create a song and then you have the chitons who you come from uh different age groups and all the the kids are at a different stage of life (laughs) and you all come together with this thought that came from a random line of sermon from two random writers who happened to be together that day and God used their gifts to craft a song. It's just only God could put all this together. And that's the beautiful thing about the gospel. Just because that one line was said by a preacher, and he didn't even know anyone was listening. Yet the return is thousands of people will be blessed and encouraged. It's always an enjoyable process to write songs like this and to write with Rodney. Co-writing with him is just, um, it's very enjoyable. Hmm. And we get to focus on what the one person that we all love the most, and that is God Amen. and lifting him up in song. And I adore him. We could definitely tell by the lyrics of this song. This song is just <laughs> completely, I would say, a nice love letter to the Lord. Oh, well, good. Thank you. You're very well. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I, I'm honored that I got the the email, hey, we're looking for songs, and I was able to send those, and I gave you, sent several, and those were the three that you chose, and I was just, it's really rare to have three songs on someone's CD, so I'm extra special, extra mm-hmm. specially glad and happy and honored, and uh, it makes it a very special CD for me. And I wouldn't be talking to you if it weren't for Sue Smith and Rachel McCutcheon. So when you co-write, you split all the credit. And I cannot take the credit, but they're not sitting here on the bus right now. So I'm going to give them credit to wherever they are and whenever they watch this. I love you guys, and it's a pleasure to write with you.
we thank you all for joining us today. We hope that uh, this episode gave you an insight on uh, how we feel about the songs, Why I Love the God I Serve, and I Know a God Like That, and into kind of like the process of picking the songs. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed the little preview and that you uh, enjoyed hearing from uh, the songwriter. Uh, but we... We hope that you have a fantastic day. We thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by leaving a like or leaving a comment. We'd love to hear about what you're feeling, um, what you're thinking and stuff like that, what you're excited for. Uh, if you have a favorite song thus far, well, we are so um, looking forward to hearing from you. If you'd like to be notified about future videos we have coming out, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell. And when you hit the notification bell, if you want to receive every single video that comes out a notification for it then what you'll do is uh, you'll select all instead of personalized um, yeah but we look forward to going on the rest of this journey with you we thank you for joining with us and we'll see you next time goodbye, goodbye. <laughs>